Hey, it's your Pan-African World Diaspora Champion, Trish Adora, and you are watching O-Face Wrestling. <laughs> hey guys, it's your girl Red Velvet, and you are watching O-Face Wrestling. Hola todos, soy la fashionista Rache Chanel, and you're watching O-Face Wrestling. Smooches! Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to O-Face Wrestling. This is your host, JT, and today I am joined by Strella. So thanks for joining us today, Strella. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. So I'm really excited to learn, you know, about you and your character today. So um, I do want to let you know, I'm going to do something a little bit different with this interview that I really haven't done with anyone else. I like to spice it up every now and then. The So, you know, not all my interviews are the same. So typically I have like a piece of paper in front of me with, you know, usually like five to six questions that I want to ask. And I just kind of go through, you know, one by one. So this time um, what I want to do is I, I, I want you to tell me about yourself, how you got into wrestling, your journey, and your experience being a professional wrestler, and just tell me, you know, anything that you would want people to know about yourself as a wrestler. Okay. Um, I started training for wrestling in 2018, the winter of 2018. I actually moved all the way from Detroit to Las Vegas to become a wrestler. And what got me into wrestling, my dad used to watch it, like, all the time. And when I was younger, he wanted me to get into it, too. But I was, like, I was, like, I was like a girly girl, and I was, like, all into, like, all the other stuff. And I was confused on what I wanted to do. It's, like, I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a singer. But I didn't decide that I wanted to be a wrestler until about, like, 2012, 2013. And that was um, when my college journey had ended. So I guess it was like WrestleMania, like the whole WrestleMania 30 storyline with Daniel Bryan. And Daniel Bryan is the one who actually inspired me to push forward and actually start training for wrestling because I was so emotionally invested in his storyline with the authority. And I was like, oh, my God, Daniel Bryan can do anything. And I'm like, well, maybe I could just go do it, too. And then I started, like, watching more and more, like, studying back in the day like when I used to watch in 20, uh, 2006 and it's been pretty much from there yeah I remember that Daniel Bryan storyline like that was a big deal because yeah. I don't want to necessarily say he was like the first of his kind but he he wasn't your prototypical wrestler you know he's not your big old muscle triple h looking guy he's short right. most wrestlers you know he as this beard, you know, he's just, he's not your clean cut, you know, face of the company kind of guy that WWE's typically had in the past. And Right. He's not like your rock or your Roman Reigns. Like he was just really like a plain like wrestler who got pushed to the moon. Yeah, exactly. Like, and he organically went over, like it, it reminds me of the, the run with Kofi Kingston two years ago. Like, I, it wasn't supposed to happen, but the fans got behind him and WWE just ran with it. And, like, the the thing is, like, with Daniel Bryan, he was the first of his kind that I saw. I remember when I got back in, the in 2010, I was watching the match at SummerSlam when he was on Team Cena versus the Nexus. And when I saw him yeah. do side dive out of the ring, because I'd never seen a wrestler do that before, I was like, wow, this guy's freaking awesome. Yeah. And now you see that a lot more, you know, often with wrestlers. But just, like, he really opened up my eyeballs to a new style of wrestling. And yeah, I, you know, I became a big fan of him instantly at the time. And it's just, like, wrestlers – I feel like he, like, really opened up the door for a lot of wrestlers because now you see – smaller wrestlers getting you know pushes in wwe I mean, even adam cole like, you know i i had no yeah short as he is too so it's like daniel bryan's a very inspirational wrestler and you know he is um, he is and i used to like look back at his um, ring of honor stuff too to like study that and like his him his technical abilities are so good and how that's what drew me to him i'm like daniel bryan's like really good like he's not just like your basic wrestler like he's good yeah he is 
fantastic. Just like just the idea of thinking about him like having a match against someone like Kurt Angle in his prime. I mean, just imagine how good of a match that would be. Yeah. So um, now I want to. Yeah. I, I want to ask about your character. So tell me a little bit about your character and how you came up with that. Um, honestly, I am under construction with my character. I don't really want to give too many details because I don't want to see another version of it, you know? Mm-hmm. But my old character that I had, it was honestly, like, inspired from, like, with the clean gimmick. Charlotte Flair is, like, another one of my favorite wrestlers, and I, like, based it from her and then I was like a big Game of Thrones freak so I was like well maybe I could tie Game of Thrones into this gimmick and like the Snow White storyline with the Evil Queen I'm like maybe I could add that into it but honestly it just like when when I first came up with it I thought it was cool but I just see way too many queens and I'm like how do I stand out like how do I make myself different so right now I'm kind of like under construction which is why like all my social media, like, it's no longer Queen Estrella. It's more like Strella. And I'm just, like, re, like, redirect, like, what's the word? <laughs> like, redesigning myself. Mm-hmm. Because, like, when I first came across you on social media back, I think it was, like, around the summertime, that's when you were Queen Estrella. And I saw one of your pictures, and it, it, it kind of gave me, like, Queen of the Dam vibes, if – uh-huh. No, not. So that, that's what I always thought. Like I always thought, like, like kind of like a vampire kind of thing, and I thought that was uh, really cool. But yeah, yeah, I mean, you you are not lying though. There's a lot of like, you know, queens in wrestling, you know, and it is hard to stand out. Um, yeah, it, it. I still feel like anytime someone deems themselves as as a queen in wrestling, I feel like it's not like crazy common where you like blend in with everyone else. It still makes you stand out. Because I feel like uh-huh. in, like, every promotion, there's, like, one queen. Like, you know, WWE, there's, you know, Charlotte Flair. and But it's, like, yeah. you don't really – like, I don't think there's anyone, like, AEW or Impact who's, like, a queen, uh, at least from my knowledge. So, I mean, it's yeah. not crazy, crazy common, but it, it has been done a lot. So, I, I feel like if you find the right kind of, like, character, queen character that, you know, like, resembles you, I feel like you could definitely make it work. Yeah, like the new character that I'm coming up with right now, like I want, I'm like trying to make it so different because um I'm honestly like six one, so I'm like taller and bigger than most girls, and it's like there's the monster gimmick, and like I'm fine with being a monster, but I don't want to be like your typical monster. Like I can compare it to Awesome Kong, and it's like I love Awesome Kong, but I don't want to be another Awesome Kong. Like I want to be, I want to have that power and that that like. The her presence, but like different. Yeah, and I mean six foot one. You're taller than me, so wow, like that's, uh, <laughs> that's <pretty> cool. <laughs> yeah, I did not know that. I think that's a pretty interesting fact. But I mean, yeah, I mean when you you know being you know six foot one, it's kind of hard not to like be looked at as kind of like a monster character, and and I think that's pretty yeah. cool. I think uh, I mean kind of going back to the comment I made, you know, just like a minute ago about like the queen of the damn like a vampire kind of thing. You could be kind of like a monster that's kind of like a vampire, you know, where you like maybe bite someone's neck or something like that. I mean, mm-hmm. I just not really bite it, but you know, I, I wouldn't recommend doing that right now with COVID. But I know, know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's you got to be careful with you know some things right now but like I, I mean that's just me like I love like you know vampire movies and stuff like that so I mean that would be something that I would personally dig but I don't know how you know if that's something that would fit you and like, kind of like your style and like what you like because when it comes to like the wrestlers in the indies the one thing I really like is they can be whoever they want to be they're not controlled by a company and told what they have to be so a lot of you know a lot of y'all you know you could tell that you're you're having so much fun portraying you know your characters because it's what you want to do and you, you're naturally gonna have fun you know or more fun doing what you want to do versus what someone else is telling you so I think if you right. just find something that relates to you and something that you can enjoy doing I think you could really um you know, knock that out of the ballpark right yeah and that's like the good thing about the indies is that like when the more people find themselves the more they can play with different types of characters or like gimmicks and stuff like that and once they find the one that works for them, it's like off to the moon from there. 
Yeah, because I mean, you know, you can change it as much as you want, really. There's no way yeah. not to and all. And you can kind of exaggerate it as much as you want or tone it down, tone it up. You know, and I've seen, you know, I, I've seen a lot of wrestlers do that on the indies. So it's, you know, it's a good way to experiment. And it's like you can go to different promotions and not – and kind of be something different because, you know, I – mentioned it before too on a few of my other episodes but like i went to one event back in february and trisha dora she was a heel and then two weeks later i went to another event that she was at she was a face so it's kind of like you can bounce around depending on the promotion and who you're you know wrestling and kind of just get different characters yeah for sure and i think that that's really fun because it's like you can see something different from someone at you know different events Definitely. So I wanted to ask you about the one promotion that you, you know, wrestle for on um, Future Stars of Wrestling. So tell me a little bit about that promotion. Future Stars of Wrestling is actually my home promotion. I have trained, I'm trained out of FSW. And right now we're like on the come up right now. Like we're doing so many big things. And like the only thing that's kind of trying to stop us with this COVID stuff right now, but I feel like there's so many eyes on FSW right now, and that's, like, one of the promotions that a lot of people want to work for. And, like, Joe, he's great. Like, Rocky, like, all of the production team, like, they're all awesome. Like, my trainers. Like, I wouldn't be where I am right now without FSW. Yeah, I was looking at their uh, YouTube page uh, a few days ago, and um, was it um, Killer Cross that used to wrestle there, or was it someone else I saw? Yes, uh, Kevin Cross actually trained at FSW. Okay, Kevin yeah, Cross, Chris Bay. Yeah, I saw the um, the pit one of the thumbnails on there, and I was like, "Holy smokes! Like that's Killer Cross! Like that that that's really yeah. cool! Like you know, that's a." pretty well established you know company that has someone that can't come from there so that's pretty yeah that, that's um you know it, it's it's a it's a promotion that's new to me i just discovered it as i was you know doing a little research on you and it's it's a company that i really want to you know keep my eye on because that's the pretty like cool thing about the indies is there's a lot of different promotions prior For to sure. being, like we even have lacy like we have lacy ryan coming out of fsw mm-hmm. like we just have like a lot of people who are just being built up right now and like they're just making their names across the country. Yeah, Lacey Ryan, um I, I'm really liking what I've seen from her. Uh, she's gonna be um contending for the, the Mission Pro Wrestling's championship. Yeah. In the weeks. And when I when I saw her um her little brawl with uh, La Rosa, I was like, Wow, this girl is intense. Like she was she's another yeah, one that she's I just legit. Across. Like she's she's really good and I, I think she's definitely got a lot of um potential and a bright future ahead of her. For sure. So um and I wanted to know too, tell me about that little I don't know if it's like a faction you're in, but I saw you posted a picture, a, a group that you're a part of. Um tell me a little bit about that. Um, with Maserati and Nick Bugatti. Uh we are like a little faction. Mostly I'm like the bodyguard to Maserati. Um, I was recently put with her, I want to say a few months ago, maybe like the beginning of the year, I was put with her to be her muscle. And she's been, she's acted as like a mentor and everything to me. Uh, her and Nick Bugatti, they've helped me a lot too. Uh, we're actually roommates. <laughs> like we all live together. We all study tape together and stuff like that. Uh, right now we're like a heel, like a heel faction. So we're, in the process of establishing right now. And uh, Maserati just actually won the FSW women's title from Lacey Ryan. So we have that going for us right now. Yeah, I, I saw that on uh, social media recently. Now she's a double champ. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I feel like that's like the theme of 2020, like with double champs, like we've seen it with Keith Lee, Sasha, Bailey. Um... Who else? There's Hi, Mom, uh, two belts. Yes, like it, it's just like the it's the thing of 2020, and I think that's you know that's a really cool thing. And I also think it's really yeah. neat that you all are actually like roommates and you know really good friends in real life. That that adds to the chemistry, and 
it, yeah. it definitely shows when you're in the ring working together, you know, and that always makes for a pretty cool team. Yeah, we're always coming up with stuff like, oh, maybe we should do this. Oh, this would be actually pretty cool. Like, it, it obviously just works fluidly. Exactly. And, and since you all live together, there's, like, you have, like, all the time in the world to kind of, like, discuss things and, you know, right. randomly bring up something. Oh, we got to do this without, you know, having the issue of forgetting or anything like that. So that's uh, pretty cool. I did another fact about you that I did not know. Right. So yeah. now um, I got two more questions for you. The next question is, tell me a little bit about your or something about yourself that's non wrestling related that you would want like your fans to know about you. That I wouldn't want my fans to know about me. That you would. Uh. I don't know. I'm not that. Re- I'm not really that interesting. <laughs> like I mostly just like rest. I mostly just train and wrestle and work. Um, I take care of like my shoot job. I take care of disabled adults. <laughs> so I guess that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I mean, that's something that all you know that a lot of people probably you know. I feel, I feel like that's not like a job that's like really popular that a lot of people be wanting to do. So, I mean, having people that actually want to do it, like, you know, I think that's awesome. You know, yeah. it, it takes a lot. Exactly. I can only imagine like it, it's something that I wouldn't be able to mentally handle. So like, I definitely got to give you props. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually from, like, I came, I'm from Detroit and I actually come from like a singing family. <laughs> <laughs> so like my career path is completely different from like something my family would do because like literally my entire family sings like it's crazy <laughs> so i have to ask so you say you're from detroit are you a uh, detroit lion fan i am not and my dad he is the biggest lions fan and if i talk any trash on the lions like he gets upset like <laughs> he's like don't talk trash on my lions and i'm like oh well they suck <laughs> yeah they haven't had the best of luck for a long time now like um, ever <laughs> yeah um i'm actually a minnesota viking fan so they're in our division um i i don't have any issue with the lions that there's there's always like that one player they had that i've always loved like I, I loved Calvin Johnson for a long time. They um they have our former running back Adrian Peterson, so I have to you know give them some love. Yeah, because Calvin Johnson was the best thing they had. Mm-hmm. It's, I just they're they're one team outside of my team that I would just love to to see when you know win a Super Bowl or something, just because I, I feel like they've had a rough couple of decades and. Yeah, you know, kind of like when the Tampa Bay Rays finally won, you know, a few years ago. I was like, you know, congratulations, because you know they. I remember when they first came up like 20 years ago, they sucked, and it's just like it's it's nice seeing a team that's just struggled for so many years actually finally win the big game. Uh-huh. Now, um, the last question I have for you, if you hypothetically um were signed by wwe and you had the opportunity to main event wrestlemania and you could pick any opponent in any promotion across the world who would you want to be that opponent the main event wrestlemania with you honestly my dream match is charlotte flair i hear that all the time like it, everyone yeah. wants to, to go toe-to-toe with the really? queen yeah so, uh, charlotte, she's just such a good athlete like if it wasn't charlotte flair then it'd be Bianca belair for sure you know what's funny about that too is you know um, i'm a big bianca belair fan and of course you know oh, like she's amazing. I, she is amazing and the crazy thing is she didn't wrestle in the indies and all that kind of stuff she just she was just the uh, athlete she just Profit, the, yeah. yeah and she just got good just like charlotte fair like she just naturally had that gift and yeah i am dying to see her finally get a title i it bothered the heck out of me that they teased you know her winning the nxt women's title for so long and they never did it i know she never did and now she's on smackdown and i 
feel like Falsh is probably not going to lose that anytime soon. So it's like, when will Bianca yeah. get that opportunity? I'm not mad about Falsh holding it though, but I'm just saying like that probably means Bianca's not going to win it for a while. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Unless she goes after, unless uh, they do another switch and she goes to Raw. Yeah, that that could have happened. I, mean, I know they just did the like draft, so draft, yeah. I think the the best opportunities if she won the Royal Rumble and then challenged either oh, Sasha yeah. or Asuka at WrestleMania. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, I I would love Bianca to win. Um, either her or Naomi if Naomi's healthy enough to come back. I feel oh, like yeah. either one. Would be I need story. Naomi to get a title again. I need her to get a title again. <laughs> Yeah, she's been very underutilized her whole career. Like, she has pretty much everything. I feel like there's still something missing, and I just don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, and I I feel like they just need to let her loose. Just let her be whoever she wants to be, you know. I think that's that's what's missing, because one thing with WWE is they're very scripted with their promos, and I feel like that's, that's like, her only really weakness is scripts. Like, when she... Like mm-hmm. I know when that whole like give Naomi a chance thing went around Twitter and she cut a promo door. I think it was like the Miz um segment. She it was uh-huh. pretty good and you could tell that was like her talking, you know, just saying what how she feels and typically the non scripted promos are usually the best. Yeah. yeah. And I and like you know, scripted promos, I feel like they're just they're hard for almost anyone. You know, just trying to remember all these different yeah because you have like yeah so i still can't I, remember anything <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't remember 10 words that they told me to do it so it's like i don't blame wrestlers for struggling with that right uh so um strella i you know i have to say that i really enjoyed this interview with you and i want to thank you for joining us today on o-face wrestling i want to thank you for actually having me oh no problem i'm you i've had interest in you for a few months now it you know i you know i have a really long list of wrestlers you know so i was really happy to act you know actually get you on the show and you know conduct this interview and um so do you have any social media that you want to throw out there or any upcoming merch or anything for the listeners to know about I do have, I'm in the middle of trying to get designs for shirts. I have eight bisons. Um, I'm trying to get my links set up for all of that. But you can't, but once I have everything done, y'all can find me on my social media, which is I am the Strella. And that's Z with two E's, like Meg the Stallion. <laughs> <laughs> and Estrella Hansley on Facebook. All right, make sure you all follow her on all the social media. Look out for her merch. I'm definitely going to be hitting you up for some 8x10 soon. I I, I, I have a lot of 8x10s. It's kind of like a – I like to collect them. You know, yeah, I like that's cool. Book, so, yeah, I'm definitely going to hit you up about that. And um, awesome. so also, everyone, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Give us a sub on YouTube, and thank you all for tuning in today. And then one last thank you, Estrella, for uh, joining us today on O-Face Wrestling. Thank you, and make sure y'all keep your eyes on me. Uh, we definitely will. We're really excited to see this uh, character change that you're talking about. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome, and thank you all again for tuning in to O-Face Wrestling. <laughs>